everyone. It's April 30th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and we are sewing along on our socialites. So I'm going to kind of show you the blocks today and then we'll just jump right into the blocks. I also have lots of stuff that I stitched last week and um, kind of want to show you a little bit about how I do use my design boards to be efficient since that's one of the number one questions that we get. So I'm just going to jump right in and this block is a basket block. It's designed by me and my sister designs. It's block 29 and it is called Delight. So I'm going to start with showing Barb and Mary's block. And on their block, they use their brand new Christmas group, which is going to ship in May, June. It's called Mary and Bright. And I believe they made the 12 inch version. So their Christmas print, the whole collection is very large scale and it's so cute. So that is their block. We're considering it um, a beginner block. These are the three blocks that I did quite a bit ago using Homestead. And I did use a background. I'm gonna talk more about this background a little bit later in the show because it sold out this weekend. So I'm gonna talk to you about my plans for this background since I love it so much. There is a plan. So this is the nine inch block, the six inch and the three inch. And you can see when you're looking at these three inch blocks, your design gets a little bit lost. So those are the blocks that I made using the Homestead Collection by April Rosenthal. Here are our sample maker blocks. This one looks marvelous. This is made by Teresa and this is the quotation fabric by Zen Chic. And I think this one right here is one of their spotted, spotted prints. This one is Figs and Shirtings, which is the same collection that I'm gonna be using today. And she used kind of a low volume. This is the one I'm gonna use. So same collection. And Deborah made this one. This is Folk Tail Fabric by Layla Boutique, and Terry made this one. Sue made this block, and it's Shine On by Bonnie and Camille, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Actually, Shine On is their last group. I'm gonna show you the Sunday Stroll, which just arrived this week because everybody's been asking about it. It'll mix really well with this. And then the last block was made by Angel, and this is Cider by Basic Gray. So I'm gonna kinda just show them to you. So you can get a look, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different things about this block that. So basket blocks can be made in a lot of ways. I'm gonna, this one's showing the best on the screen. So I'm gonna show this one and talk to you about it. So what we're doing when we assemble this block is we're gonna make these four half square triangles using half square triangle paper. We're gonna make this one just with the traditional method and then these are gonna be half square triangles that are the same size as this. So we're gonna make six half square triangles. And then these are rectangles and this is a square. There are a ton of ways to make a basket block. You could also make this block where you have your half square triangle there and then you have half square triangles here and then you add this. So there's a ton of different ways that you can assemble a basket block. And this is the way that we came up with on this one. I love basket blocks. I love basket quilts. In fact, um, we're working on something with basket quilts um, coming up soon that you guys are gonna love. So um, I'm gonna jump right in. Here are my two fabrics that I'm gonna use. This is just a Bella Solid color 200. And like I said, this is figs and shirtings. And these are the blocks I made previously. They're so tiny. And this is the one that it just looks so bad. I can't stand it. So I don't know, I think it looks good with this one. So we're gonna start with the three inch. I have all of my patterns in here. You can download this free pattern on our website or our blog, which our website is Fat Quarter Shop and our blog is The Jolly Jabber. 
And when I'm done, I am gonna keep everything in this so that if I ever need a three inch or six inch or 12 inch block, these are all free. And if I keep them, I can use them if I wanna switch something out. Because when you're making a quilt, like a lot of times designers will put an applique block in and I don't love applique. So I would have easy access to this. With it being in the binder, I would know exactly where to go. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, a Ada from Puerto Rico. So exciting. I've been to Puerto Rico once. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to start with covering up the six and the nine so that my distracted mind doesn't um, go there. So I'm going to start here. Let's talk first about the half square triangles. So if you are making the three inch size that we're making, you would use the one inch paper and trim down. So today we're gonna do that, actually it's this one, but I'm gonna actually remember to trim down because last time I didn't. So we're gonna remember this time. If you're making the six inch size, you'll use the one and a half inch paper. And if you're making the two and three quarter inch size, you will use the two and three quarter inch paper. So you just take half an inch away from the unfinished size and that will be the paper you need. So we're gonna start with this paper. And for B and D, it says I need three squares. So I'm just gonna unroll this. And from here, what I think I will do is, I think I'm gonna use these three and then just keep these. So I'm just gonna cut this off. Sorry, the paper's covering the screen. Sorry. So, Charmaine says, what do you do when the blocks are small and it's not quite laying flat? So what I do there is I clap it down with heat. So I'll show you that, that in a little bit. So for B and D, I'm going to put my fabrics right sides together. Now with a Bella Solid, there's not really a right or wrong side. And I'm going to put this right here. Laura says, good morning, beautiful people. Yes, good morning. I've noticed that the last three Fridays have been really foggy, and so I'm wondering, like, why in Austin is it only foggy on Fridays? I was thinking that when I drove to work today. So I'm going to put this on a design board. And then, let's see, for A, that fabric is going to go here. And this one, we're gonna make the regular way. So I'm gonna show you how I cheat on this one. On this one, so A and C, you need a two inch square. I'm just gonna cut two and a half and chop it off. So let's see. I'm gonna, and then we'll trim it down. Because with the three inch size, I mean, you're not gonna use all the fabric. So I'm gonna do that. And instead of drawing on a line, I'm going to go ahead, cut here, discard this, of course you could save it, and we're going to just sew these together, and when we sew them together, we can cut them. So let's see, so that's our A, this is our B. So we've got A, B, D, and C cut. So for E and F, it's just your print, and those are going to be these rectangles and this square right here. Oh, that's the iron. It says, good morning, people. That's what the iron says. So on this, they're all one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to just cut. I'll go ahead and use this side. I'm just going to cut a straight line. 
I prefer to get all these little um, jagged edges off. I don't, I don't love those. Cut one and a quarter. Let us know if you're sewing along with Kimberly. So let me know if you are sewing along, if you're sewing a block, if you're sewing something of mine, Lori's. Let me know what you're sewing. It's always fun to know what other people are doing. I sewed so much last week. I have so much stuff to show you guys. It was so fun. So I'm gonna cut the two rectangles first and then the two squares. So yeah, this is pretty easy. I mean, pretty, pretty easy if I don't cut, I was about to cut this one wrong. So we have E's and F's. So now we can start. I'm gonna answer some questions though. Um, need the size for triangle paper again. So for the three inch block, you would get the one inch finished triangle paper, but you need to trim it down to three quarters of an inch. For the two inch, for the six inch block, you would need H150. For the nine inch block, you would need H225. And it, oh, and then Brenda says the acorn precision pin helps with um, keep them flat. Yes, I actually bought that product and I'm going to try it out this weekend and I will let you know my reviews. Oh, Gina says, good morning. She's making my binding. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Love my binding. So from the side camera, what I'm going to do is on here, I'm just going to, wing it i'm just gonna i'm gonna just with this foot i'm not gonna use the quarter inch foot i'm just gonna wing it by using the line on here because we're gonna trim it down so it doesn't have to be accurate and then i'm gonna be accurate on this one actually i don't even have to be that accurate because i'm gonna trim down so this is triangle paper it's my favorite notion and i'm gonna turn my little knob knobby knob down to like a one point Two, one, I don't know, I, I go a little bit too low. I'm making 192 flying geese and using the quilt in a day ruler. Thank you for recommending it. Oh my gosh, I love that ruler. I found that ruler um, in Paducah actually. She had like a tent show, Eleanor did. Lori says, I'm sewing lots of red sampler blocks while at retreat. Yay! Send me photos so I can sew tonight. I'm going to sew. Question for Kimberly. What is the lead time for planning and executing a sew along such as socialites? For us, behind the scenes, nine months. Minimum six months, but more likely nine Can't wait for your project sewing great granny squared. Oh, great granny garden quilt. Awesome. Okay, so from here, oops. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I actually need to cut this down. So I'm gonna cut this down. I'm doing the snowflake pattern from Fat Quarter Shop Blue and White Bella Solids. Oh, that sounds pretty. Is there a chart for triangle squares? Yes, there is. And it's on our blog, it's on our website, and we just reposted it in Kimberly's Stitch Squad. Margaret loves the triangle paper. It's a lifesaver. Yes, I love it too. This was always my favorite brand when I started, and so, um, And we're working on a something to use to where it'll be easier to tell which size you have. I'm sewing flea market flowers, socialites, RBD blocks, Kate in Ireland. Yay! Well, you're missing. You're still missing the triangles on the basket. No, I got it right here. 
Will you be getting any more of the on the farm white on white? Yes, so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later today. Socialites, fig trees, winter solstice, and village quilt. Oh, the village quilt, that is, I love that quilt. That's by um, Miss Rosie, Carrie Nelson. So from here, I'm gonna just press open and answer questions. On this quilt, we're pressing open because of the setting. When we do another Socialites, like Socialites version two, we won't press open. We'll do something where it doesn't have to be pressed open. Lacey is working on the Fig Tree Stars and Stripes quilt. Gabriel is not sewing anything. I'm working two jobs and going to school. Oh. Good luck going to school. I would not want to go back at my age. Gorgeous Rose, what ruler did you use to cut the half square triangles? I used the six by 12, it's CGR 612. It's the one I use a lot. Any updates on American Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundles? What Moda did is they sent out an email and said they sent all the pre-cuts out except for the Fat Quarter Bundles. They had to get those made separately because there was such a big demand for them and there is not an update yet but I know that she is not going to start the sew along until they arrive I think it's got to be sometime soon though but they have not shipped yet what is the status on the clappers okay so I haven't heard back yet I actually emailed Riley Blake and didn't get an answer so I we got a hundred which sold out right away but we have a lot more on order. So I think they're still checking with the man who makes them. We do have some of the Creative Grids clappers or let me say Gypsy Quilter clappers in stock. And if those are out of stock, they should be back by like Monday or Tuesday because I have them ordered. Oh, that's her iron. He's not happy this morning. He's grumpy. He sounds like one of my kids when they wake up. Oh my goodness, that thing was not happy. I think it's out of water, maybe. That's so funny. Oh, mid to late May from Clint. Sorry. Did you get new glasses? You're keeping up with the chat. Amazing job. No, I didn't get new glasses, but I am looking into getting the lens replacement surgery. How about the Tula Pink kits? So I don't know the name of that kit. I would go ahead and email Lucy at fatquartershop.com and she can let you know because I don't know on that one. I'm working on star flower quilt from Sew Sampler Box. Yay, I have seen so many people love that quilt, so that's awesome. So this clapper just keeps them, it takes the wood and it absorbs the heat. Good morning from Connecticut. Good morning. So from here, I need my small half square triangles to measure one and a quarter. And since my paper wasn't finished that size, I need to trim them down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take my smallest ruler, which is two and a half, put the line on the ruler here. And then what I do at home to save time, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to trim two sides at a time. and then come back and trim them down. But the most important thing here is to have the diagonal line on the ruler with the seam. So this is my idea of mass production. Will bright side fabric requirements be available as a PDF? They're gonna be on the blog soon. Pamela says, I think Kimberly is doing an awesome job reading questions, cutting, pressing, sewing, way to multitask. Oh, thanks. I do multitask quite a bit. Having kids, a business. I finished the bright side block. I love it. Love the sew sampler. Yay. Thank you. Yes. And if y'all want to see a little bit on the inspiration for the sew sampler recipe cards that are in the box this year, you can go to Sherry McConnell's YouTube channel and she talks a lot about it. She posted a video this week. 
So I've trimmed two sides and then I just doop. Now I'm gonna trim the others all at the same time. And by doing this, it helps me not make a mistake, especially while I'm on camera. So this ruler, luckily, is two and a half divided by two is one and a quarter. So on this ruler, there's white lines exactly where I need to cut. So I actually don't need to think. I just need to line up the white line, the white line, the diagonal black line, and cut. And most of the time we have triangle paper for the size of the blocks. This is just a rare instance where we don't. We will, of course, keep adding sizes. Next on our list, though, is the square and a square pads. More sizes of that. Where do I download the previous blocks? All at fatquartershop.com. Just search Socialites SEW. My hubby had the lens replacement. He says it's the best decision ever. Yes, the only reason I haven't gone is I'm scared. So, but I, I would like to do it because when I wake up, I would like to not have to find my glasses so that I can see. And a lot of times I go to sleep with my glasses on. So then I can't find them. Question for Kimberly. I just joined So Sampler. How do I get the April block pattern? We loaded it last week, so you would just search bright side and it will come up and it'll say block number one. Okay, so I've got all of these done, all six of these. Now this one we also made bigger. This one needs to be two by two. And I know that just by reading here. Ooh. It's barely going to be two by two. I must have done this one wrong. Oh, it came out right, but I think I shouldn't have cut that. That's what I was supposed to do. I wasn't supposed to cut that right on the center, but that's okay. Everything worked. What blades do you use? Okay, so I prefer Ulfa Endurance Blades, but I can tell you right now this blade needs to be changed. I um, sewed so much this weekend, I actually went through two of those blades, which is like unheard of. But I do prefer Endurance, but I've never really, I've actually never tried another company's blade, so I wouldn't really even know how to say what's good or bad. Kind of, when I started, not, not all the companies were around that are around now, so... But if I like something, I kind of just keep it. So from here, I'm just going to try to lay it out like this. And all of that will encompass the things before it. But this is how I prefer to do it, is just to lay everything out according to the final block. And on this one, there's not going to be a lot of... Um, you can't really move your fabric around to get a different look, per se. Since it's a, a basket, you're actually creating a basket, it would be hard to kind of just make something up. So from here, I'm going to be looking at my pattern, going here, going to my sewing machine, and then coming back and using my quick press seam roller. And I'm just gonna do a couple steps at one time going back and forth. And I'll probably put my pattern like this so that I can multitask. So I'll do this seam and attach it. Then I will come and do these two and then bring it back and we'll iron. So we'll go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna put these right sides together I'm going to change my foot. And I'm not going to pin because they're so small. I'm going to use like a 1.5 stitch length. And so once I sew it, I just put it right back on my where it goes. And from here 
Just sew it, put it right back on your board. I think this one's turned wrong. So this one needs to be turned right. So yeah, I'm just um, looking as I go. And then we'll iron. I'll go ahead and use the iron. So if you come back to the top camera, you'll see I kind of just sew and then put it back on the board. We're gonna iron, press open, and then we'll finish. And this is what I do at home, except that my ironing table and my sewing table are very far apart. And I do have some pictures to show you from what I did last week just to show you how I get so much done. Dateline was pretty good last week. I kind of was watching Dateline at the same time as I was watching this guy that I watch that does live videos. And my mom was like, why are you watching two things at once? And I was like, cause this is just what I do. So that's funny. Do you think the sew sampler Sherry McConnell blocks would look good in two colors only? Yes, I do. Has anyone tried the blade sharpeners? Okay, so we sometimes sell those from time to time. General consensus is that it's a waste of money, but I've never tried it. Do you know when the Happy Days Fat Quarter Bundle is due in to arrive? Probably soon. Everything's just, everything is um, probably soon. I haven't, it hasn't shipped yet. What is the model of Juki I'm sewing on? TL-2010Q. And at home I have this one and I have the Platinum Edition. And they're the same exact machine. And I use both. I'm sewing half a farm girl quilt with a friend in Seattle. So make the block twice and share. Oh, that's awesome. Lori and I are already planning next year's um, Best Friends Quilt Along. She has a really good idea. So I'm excited about that. When will the Sew Sampler April finishing kits be available? They're actually online and they're being cut and um, they're not on the What's New page because we're cutting them, but they are in stock. So just kind of search around and you'll find it. Kimberly, do you ever use the knee lift? Yes, I always use it, except I can't do it when I'm standing up because I don't know, I'd probably knock over the trash can or something. But yeah, I do use it at home all the time. How's Piggy? Piggy is great. He is so spoiled, that dog is so spoiled. He, um, he, I was trying to proof a book last night and he was just sitting in my lap and I was like, okay, Piggy, can you move? And he would not move. So I just finally just said, okay, well, I'm not gonna proof the book then. He just sits like on top of whatever I'm doing. Okay, so let's see if we've got it all the right way. No, I don't. So let's see. One, two, one, two, this, that, that. Perfect. So from here, I'm going to sew these together and these together first, and we'll go from there. But yes, um, the Acorn Precision products, I haven't tried them. I've heard great reviews, so I am actually taking them home this weekend. I'm gonna watch their YouTube videos and try them out. So here on this one, I want the seams to nest. So I just kind of put them where you can see that they're nesting, put a pin, and so. Okay, Paulette is asking, what is the purpose of the clapper? So I think the clapper is like the cherry on top. Like when you buy a shake, you don't have to get the cherry, but you like the cherry, so you buy the cherry. So that's what I consider it. It's a bonus 
you don't have to have it. I sewed for years without it, but once now that I have it, I love it. And what it does is it absorbs the heat from the block and it makes it flatter. Now, when I'm on camera, it's not that effective really because I'm not letting it sit there long enough. But when I'm at home, I will let it sit there until it's completely not hot any longer. And when I do that, I will get really good results. What is a good pattern to use with ombre fairy dust? I would go with one of Vanessa's patterns because her patterns are meant to be used with ombre and her patterns are very popular. What is your cutting board made of that you can iron on? I don't think there is one. There might be, but I don't know of one. So from here, I'm gonna sew these two together and I'm gonna sew these two together. So when I do these two, I do need to pin and I'm gonna do the same thing where I line up where the white and the white touch and the orange and the orange touch. Do you have to renew each year? For sew sampler, no. What is the foot called for the Juki? So I ordered one. It hasn't arrived yet. I'm pinning right in this intersection right here. I ordered a quarter inch foot from Primitive Gatherings. And if you need a quarter inch foot for the Juki, just go to primitivegatherings.com and order it there. So now I'm gonna just sew. these blocks in the same exact time it takes me to make one. I could probably make three of these at home at the same time. Any updates on April's Sew by Row? Yes, should be shipping early next week. Uh, that fabric just arrived. Oh, and we have some super chats. So thank you, Pam Chamberlain. Thank you, Valeria Bauer. Valeria thinks I'm amazing. Thank you. Nancy says, I love Friday mornings sewing with Kimberly. Thank you to the FQS team. Thanks for everything I do. Thank you, Gabriel. And thank you, Randy E. And thank you, Lori Ernstoff. So here, when I pick this up now off of my clapper, it's still hot, but at home, I would have left this until it is all the way dry. Uh, dry is not the right word, but you know what I mean. So I just go back to my design board. Something is off here. Something is not right. There we go. So that's kind of how I do it at home. I literally just, like as I'm putting my finger on the dot, I'm, my eye is over here to make sure I've got it going the same way. So from here, I'm gonna put this right sides together. Somebody wants to know what the name of the board I'm ironing on. It is June Taylor's Quilters Pre Cut and Press. And they sell a couple of different sizes. This one is 12 by 18. Do you iron your starched fabric as soon as it dries or do you put it away and wait till you're, you're going to use it? I usually only starch when I'm ready to use my fabric. So normally I let it dry and then I, when it's completely dry, I iron it and I just start cutting. But if not, you can still, you can just fold it and put it away. You don't have to iron it right away. And, oh, it looks so pretty, my point matches. So here, instead of getting the iron out, I'm just gonna use the seam roller. What is a good pattern for, for a memory quilt from kids' clothing? I don't know, I would love to know that too because we have boxes of all four of our kids' clothes from the age of like one to five in a storage unit, which is a complete waste of my money because I should turn them into something. 
Are you cutting your thread with your foot pedal? Yes. And that's one of the main reasons that I love the Juki is it gives me basically an extra hand. It's like having a third hand because you can cut it. Okay, this needs to be pressed open. So for here, I actually need that pressed open. I'm gonna just run it over the iron real quick instead of pulling this board up. Okay, now here I'm gonna do poke a pin where that means two half square triangles are gonna to touch. So I put my pin in the point of this half square triangle. And then, oops, make sure it's right at that point. And then I put this pin in that point. And then I stand my pin up straight, flatten it with my fingers, and pin and hope that it's going to meet up when I do my last stitch. Ooh, I hope it's right. Looks good. Yay. Okay. seam which just means set your seam don't rock your iron like this back and forth press to one side and then press open and this is where I do use the clapper for sure at home before I Um, before I trim it down. Now here I don't have time to do that, so I'm gonna trim it down. But here I count to five is what I try to do. At home, would you chain piece if making a quilt with a three inch block? Oh, for sure. I chain piece whenever I can. Last week I chain pieced three Lori Holt red blocks and about 24 um, little uh, corner blocks for Corey's quilt. And I'm gonna show you that. So here is when the clapper is really great. And just put that down. Now at home, I would have normally let that clapper sit so that it is not hot anymore. But here I'm going to just go ahead and trim. And I'm just trying to get the little threads off. So barely any is coming off, but then it looks nice and pretty. How did you fix the Juki cutting the thread too short? How did you? It wasn't ever doing too short for me, so I'm not sure. They do have customer service though, and they do have a Facebook group, so you could join that and maybe ask them. Is starching wet okay? I starch till it's soaking wet. Um, if your fabric is wet before, I don't, I don't know how that would work. So there's my block. And from here, I would leave that clapper right on there. So I'm gonna kind of move everything out of the way real quick. I'm gonna unplug the iron. And thank you to Ann Boswell. You have brightened my week since I found you. Love Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. And I'm gonna go ahead and just answer all the questions that we've had for the block. Feel free to answer quest ask questions throughout. Penny says, did you find the Aliso iron gets hot enough? I like a really hot iron. So yes, and I have bought several of the Aliso irons and I prefer the yellow. Each of them have different timeouts in terms of when it goes from like turns off. For some reason, I really like the yellow one. What are you going to be working on this weekend? Any cross stitch? Yes, I actually planned my weekend already. I have lots of quilting and lots of cross stitch to do. And I have a set goal by Monday when I walk in the door, X blah, blah, blah needs to be done. And I keep a to-do list. So this morning, the first thing I did was make sure that I have everything that I need 
because the other day I went home and didn't have all my stuff when I got home and had to drive to work. So um, yes, I am going to be working on lots of Lori Holt stuff. I'm going to be working on something Sherry and Chelsea and lots of cross stitch. Can we see the finished block again? Yes. So I tried, when I did the polka pin, it was right here to get that to line up. What happens if you rock your iron when you set the seam? Okay, when you rock the iron, look what you're doing. You're moving your fabric. So it's gonna stretch and then you're gonna, then this is gonna be all stretchy. Have you ever used the mini Oliso travel iron? No, I haven't. Um, I'm kind of spoiled. The only place I go so is Lori's house. And when I go to Lori's house, she gets me an Oliso iron so that I can use it. Um, I'd be too scared to travel with an iron, to be honest. Kimberly, if you use the seam roller on a hard surface like your mat, it works even better. Yes, so the harder the surface, the better. Joanna says, do you press all your seams open? How do you decide? So on this quilt, we pressed open because when I put this block, hold on, the setting that we just, the setting that we designed, the blocks are gonna touch. And because there are so many seams, when I'm making this block, I don't wanna worry about what seam it's gonna touch over here so we have them all pressed open. I would recommend anytime you're working on a very small block, like a three inch, four inch block, press open. Because otherwise, you're just gonna have a big old smudge right here. And if I can avoid it, I will press to one side. So I can show you all my blocks that I worked on this weekend. And as we go, I can show you how I press and why I press that way. I do whatever I think is gonna give me the best result for that block and the setting. Is there a difference in Aliso irons other than the color? Yes, so the difference is the timeout. So I'm not sure I'm using the right word, but when you walk away from your iron, there is a, does it, auto shut off. But for some reason I got the pink because you know, I love pink and I didn't like it. So I brought it to work and they can use it at work. Monique says, what size triangles on a roll did you use for the nine inch block? I will have to look. Two point two five H two two five. When will the Christmas morning line fabric come in? Should be any day, should be soon. Which fabric line are you excited about most this year? I'm excited about Stitch by Lori Holt, and I'm excited about Christmas Morning by uh, Layla Boutique because I already started a quilt with that. And I'm also excited about, I believe it's called Sincerely Yours by Chelsea, Sherry and Chelsea. And that one I'm really excited about the quilt that's called Together. And she's hosting a sew along on her YouTube channel and on the YouTube and on the Moda blog and on her blog. So I'm excited about that. And that's one of the things that I was gonna try to like start this weekend and get ahead on. So I'm excited about that. Jennifer says, if you like the acorn precision press thing, could you demo it? Yes, I will demo it. I have no idea how it works either. I bought the beginner set because I really didn't know what to buy, but I'm gonna watch their YouTube videos in between, probably when Dateline's on, I'll probably in the commercials of Dateline put that on. What is the solid cream? background you usually use so for cream I would say hmm, 67 for white I usually use 97 or 200 or 98 but the Bella I use like 90% of the time is color 200 it's not too white it's not too cream it's just normal and it's actually this one so it ends up, I think color 200 really works with Bonnie and Camille fabric and fig tree fabric. And since I tend to use a lot of their stuff and Corey's fabric, it's not too white and it's not too cream. So that's the 200 is what I use. I have, I keep a bolt of it at all times. Brenda is asking, is 
there is going to be a Christmas in July mystery quilt. Yes, there is. It's cute too. Is designer mystery quilt start as scheduled? The, these days, many stitch alongs have delays. So that fabric has not arrived yet. So I don't know if there's gonna be a delay. I can tell you that the finishing kit will be delayed because the box that it goes in is delayed. But the block one, I'm not sure of yet since it's not May yet, but it'll just depend on what um, comes. And really the delays are from shipping containers. So if you wanna have a fun time this weekend and you just wanna like look up something, you could look up like, um, why are there shipping delays? Because like when you walk in Starbucks now, it'll say, we have, are out of certain products because of delays. So um, everything is getting delayed, not just fabric. To add on the pressing seams question, can you mix open seams? Yes, you can. You can do whatever you want because you're the boss of your own quilt because that's what Lori Holt taught me, so do whatever you want to do. I generally, I do sometimes mix. When is sew by row block of the month coming in? So block two will be shipping next week. It is slightly delayed, but um, it's being cut probably right now as we speak. Stephanie says, I love Christmas morning and surprisingly cranberries and cream ordered both. Yes, cranberries and cream is really pretty too. Katie says, after you finish a block, how do people get it so flat? So I use this, but the key is to have your block still hot from your iron before you set this on. And what I will do is, I kind of realized how ridiculous I was this weekend because I sewed a bunch and I had so many blocks going. I'm going to show y'all. I like literally when I would walk away from my ironing board, it would be like this, but I have five of these. So I have both of these two in the Riley Blake size. I have both of these in this size. And then I have one that was by, um, it was by a company and it's no longer made, but I still have it. So I had like five of these on my ironing board. When will the Liberty box be available to order? I'm not sure. Not, it's not here yet, so it won't be like next week. How are you liking your tea maker? I like it, I don't love it, and the reason why is when I make the tea, you put the tea leaves in and they always like sink to the bottom. So then when you're drinking tea, you're drinking the tea leaves and they're really strong. So I'm trying to find a tea leaf that's not super, super small. But a lot of tea leaves are fancy and I just really want like black iced tea. That's all I want is just plain tea. So I love the tea maker, but I've got to figure out how to make it better. Um, Kevin actually was working with me on it because he's like, I'm good. Cause he actually used to work before Starbucks was a thing. When he was a kid, he worked in a coffee shop. So he actually knows how to make all the coffee stuff. So my daughter drinks like crazy stuff, cappuccino. She makes, she's got all these fancy machines and we just crack up because she doesn't really know what she's doing, but she thinks she does. So he just lets her and then laughs and says, oh, I could make it better, but she won't let him. I know you're really in touch with your current customer base. Do you ever see expanding into more modern fabrics? So we buy as much modern as we can sell. So we're buying all of the Ruby Star, anything that we think we can sell, but modern is something that if we get stuck with it, we are just stuck. So we do try to buy modern, just not all modern, because we just find that we're not able to sell it. Can you just put the bags in? Okay, so if you put the tea bags in, it doesn't get, it just like is a very weak tea. Check out Zai Tea in Austin. Oh, okay. I will go there. Thank you so much for the amazing videos. I've just some, I've just sewn some tiny blocks and I would have never gotten through without it, without you. And my points look pretty. Thank you. When will you let us know what the fabrics are, requirements are for Christmas in July? June. June. Any update on the blue primitive muslin fabric? They keep pushing it back, I think May. Last time I looked, it said May 14th. Among the Stars book, any ship date? Soon, should be soon, it's at the printer. I don't know the exact date, but I know it's at the printer. It hasn't shipped from the printer in Minnesota to us yet, I know that. What is your favorite layer cake and do you? So it got cut off. Um, 
I, my favorite pre-cut is the layer cake. Do I starch it? Yes, but if you need a full 10 by 10 inch square, you would have to start with something else. I cheat and I waste a lot of fabric because I starch always. When you were pressing, what were you placing the pieces under after you pressed? They're called clappers. And there's these by Riley Blake, which we're expecting any day. And there's these by Gypsy Quilter, which we do have in stock. Will there be a Farm Girl Vintage 3 book? Sure. Yeah. Speaking of that, let's roll into that. So Lori Holt is doing a sew along using four of her books and I'm going to show you her blocks. But first I'm going to show you my pop up of sewing last Friday and that is how I sew. So if you look on the right where that computer screen is, that silver sewing machine, that's where I sew. So I had four design boards going. Three of the design boards are for the Lori Holt red sampler quilt along I'm about to show you and the bottom is the outside rings for the Cory Yoder sew along. So when I got home, I had everything already starched. I cut everything and I mass sewed everything all at once. So I did four, really that's like um, 13 blocks at a time, to be honest. So that's what I do is I take all those design boards to my sewing, sewing my iron all at one time. So you can see like in that back piece, I've sewn some half square triangle paper on the left, you can see I've sewn some four patches. In the middle, I've sewn some flying geese. Those, that's the Eleanor Burns way. On the right, I'm just doing corner squares. So I very much multitask. So on this sew along, I'm also gonna show you the three blocks that Lori showed on Monday on her blog. So this, these are the three blocks for this week. And then I'm gonna show you her first block is the 12 inch size of cozy 12 inch cozy star block by vintage christmas okay so this is the 12 inch cozy star block vintage christmas page 24. so we're going to compare my block to her block so i am ocd and i made all of these words go the same way and when you look at her block Hers don't go the same way, but I use the same fabric here and I used a different plaid here. And I think I had to use a different fabric here because I didn't have that one. So I try to stay close to what she does and I think I used a different background. So that was my first block that I made Friday. The next block, she, um, I'm gonna show you both blocks at one time. And that top left block is the new baby block from Farm Girl Vintage 2, page 103. And the bottom block is six inch Starry Nights block, Farm Girl Vintage book, page 103. I have some blocks missing though. Oh, here they are. Okay, so, okay, so let's go back to my blocks and I'll show you my blocks. And I'll talk about the different methods that I did and how I pressed. So on this block, I used H200 triangles on a roll here. I paid attention to the direction of the, the words. And I chain pieced these two and these two and trimmed down. And for pressing, let's see what I did. So I did mix. So you can see here, I mixed pressing open and pressing to one side. So the, this, this seam right here, I pressed open. And all the rest, I just pressed whichever direction I could get it to fit. So I just kind of do whatever works. I don't even know why I did it that way, but I did. And this is also H200 paper. On my Starry Nights block, this is pretty hard and I made a lot of mistakes and you're going to see that it doesn't look great. I use the flying geese small ruler by Quilton and Day for these for these flying geese, but then I trimmed it down more. But I wasn't paying attention because I was watching Dateline and I should have pressed all of these points open. 
but I wasn't paying attention and I didn't. So you can see it's bumpy right there. Somehow I got all my points to match. I was afraid I was going to have to redo it. But that is a, that is not, like that should all be pressed open right there. But it looks good. And then, yeah, that one's, I think I, oh, here I cut, I cut into my seam and pushed it this way for it to work. So this one I was not paying attention. But, I mean, still looks good. And I think I used similar fabrics to Lori. And this one, I chain pieced. What I did here is I pieced two fabrics here into one long, long, long strip. I cut them a quarter inch bigger, then I trimmed it down, and then I chopped them up. So this was all chain pieced. And I just pressed all that to one side, I guess. So that's my pressing there. And then I'm going to show you the bundle that matches. So the, this bundle has 17 fabrics in it. This is all 17 fabrics that are available at Riley Blake that are Lori Holtz. So this will not be exactly what I use or what Lori uses, but it will be a lot of it. So like this bicycle is in here. This one is not because it's not a Lori fabric. This one is not because it's not in stock right now. This one is in the bundle right here. This one is in the bundle. And this one is not, but a similar dot is. So it's got 17 of the reds and it's called the Lori Holt Red Sampler Fat Quarter Bundle. We also just put online the Lori Holt Red Sampler Background One Yard Bundle. There's only a couple in stock. It's gonna sell out this morning and later today I'm gonna make more. And that is six one yard pieces that Lori picked that are in stock. Mine will be slightly different and some will be the same and some will be different. I'm actually not buying this because I own all of this. So I'm just using whatever I have left over from projects. And now for fun, I'm going to show you all of them laid out together. And Lori's, look at Lori's. Oh, see, so hers have a little bit more brick red. She's using some of the fabrics from Prim in hers. And so hers have more of a color contrast and I'm using more of the, her lighter reds because that's what I already had. So I'm going to show mine. It's going to be hard to see them all, but we'll make it work. Now, of course, this isn't how they're going to be laid out. So check her blog on Monday and she will have the next three blocks. And next Friday, I'll show you those three. And you can see some are pressed to one side, some are pressed open. I just press whatever way works for that moment in time. Oh my gosh, okay, Lori, sorry. <laughs> That's so funny, okay, let me find it. Okay, so I, I called that a bike, it's a tractor, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh, no. Well, I thought it was a bike all these years too. I've never even thought that it was a tractor. Sorry. What is my favorite Dateline host? Oh, Keith Morrison. And I have a photo with him. Oh, I do. He is gorgeous. He is really nice, really friendly. And his voice sounds exactly like it does on TV. He's very nice. I have a great photograph with him. And I'm actually going to take it to CrimeCon in June. And I'm going to have that picture signed. And I'm going to have Nancy Gray sign my picture that I have with her because I'm crazy and I buy the like VIP, get to meet everybody and I cannot wait. I'm actually thinking, I'm actually thinking about getting a hotel room and staying there for the weekend and just like pretending I'm not in town. I just don't know if I can, but I might. I'm gonna see if I can use my points and I'm gonna stay at the hotel. They do a lot of like after hour stuff. I, I won't do any of that. Like they go to bars and stuff. I'm not going to do any of that. But um, I don't want to miss any of the like any of it. I, I plan it. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. It's going to be like the dream. Can we order the white fabric used in a bundle? Yes, I just put it online right before we started. 
and I had enough to cut like 30, but I'm gonna cut more. We're waiting on one skew to arrive today. I'm trying to find the best white on white fabric. Any suggestions? So I'm gonna transition to that. So. Okay, so we're gonna talk about whites. So my favorite white, I'm gonna show you real quick. I have it right here. I'm gonna put it over here. I just have to dig through some stuff without. Okay, this is a little sneak peek of something I'm about to show that I also did this weekend. This is my favorite white on white. It is 20708-36. I sold out of it Friday night. This is my favorite white. It's from a random Stacy Itsu collection, but I love it. It's my favorite. So I had Moda reprint it just for us. It will come in July, August, but I ran out of it too. So I'm sad, but this is my favorite white on white. But since we ran out, I need more white on white. So what I do is I buy five yard chunks. So I bought these on Monday. So this is color 200 because I'm out of the bolt and I didn't really feel like I needed a bolt right now, even though I should have bought it as a bolt, but this is 9900-200. It's a Bella solid. It's what I use most of the time. This came in last week or Monday, Friday or Monday, and it is the Sunday Stroll Collection background. It's 55226-21, and it's also a dot. I'm trying to get it to show up. Let's see. It's a dot. I'm just, if I put something underneath it, you'll be able to see it. There you go. So it's a dot, it's just more spread out than that one. So similar, but different. So that's the one that you can use for now until we run out. But I did buy a ton of it, so we should have plenty of it. Sorry, my OCD, I, got, I gotta fold it back, guys. Gotta fold it back, gotta look good. So I'm taking that home today. And then this is my one of my other favorites when I need a white white. This is Blossom by Christopher Thompson at Riley Blake. It's C725 white. So these are the colors I use when I'm working with like just my general Moda that doesn't have a white white. This one I'm out of because I actually was looking for it this weekend and couldn't find it. So that's why I bought the five yards. So these are three whites that will work now that that other one sold out but i couldn't live without it and then kevin was like are you really gonna buy all that yardage just because you like that dot what is it about the dot and i said i'm just gonna buy it just let me have my dot so it'll come in so those are some whites is there any way to recover the june taylor press and cut boarded that you're using mine is dirty and would like to recover it oh cover it you could probably, let me see, where is it? Uh, it would, you could cover it, but on the back, it would cover your mat. So you could put, if you wanted to like cover it up, you could put like some layers of batting and the, or felt or, you know, something soft and then cover it. It's just gonna cover your mat on the back. What is the name of the white bundle? Sorry, I gotta look at my file real quick. It is called Lori Holt Red Sampler Backgrounds One Yard Bundle. How many yards? So those are five yard pieces. That's usually what I buy. Actually, what I usually buy is a bolt, but I don't need a bolt of all that. Is the quarter inch foot from Primitive Gatherings the kind with the metal guide? Yes, and I have it. It's just on my home machine. And I actually think it's here in the building. I just think it hasn't made it to us yet. Have you listened to the Counter Clock True Crime podcast? No. Do you keep your scraps and make scrap quilts or do you pass along? So I showed that um, kind of early in the year in January. I follow the Lori Holt method where I cut, when I'm done with a project, I keep a quilt that I make all year long. So I'll make it throughout the whole year, which I'm gonna show you it 
in a little bit because I sewed that this weekend also. I'll first use my scraps for that and then anything that's left over I will cut up and put in six and a half, five and a half, four and a half, three and a half, two and a half, and one and a half inch baskets. And I just keep those squares. Now I am using those squares when I need reds. So some of these reds have come from that, those baskets. Where can I download a picture of the whole quilt? Okay, so Constantina, if you can tell me which quilt, that would be great. If it's Socialites, we do have on our blog, on the right side of the blog, it'll say Socialites and everything is right there. Will Farm to Market kit be replenished? I don't know what Farm to Market is. So email me at Kimberly at FatQuarterShop.com because I don't know off the top of my head. Do the fabrics in the bundles match Lori's fabrics? Yes, they're all Lori's fabrics. It's just the 17 that are in stock right now. So she might add different fabrics. I might add different fabrics because it's supposed to just be like totally scrappy. For large Lori blocks, what is the spot background? Okay. So this is chicken tracks from Farm... Farm Girl Vintage, or one of those collections. Can't think of it, Lori, tell me, but this is Chicken Tracks. This is Kisses. It's also Kisses, Let's see. This is Blossom. It's a red flower on white, which is the same design as this. And I just had that already, so I used it. And then, let's see. So those are the three I've used. I've only used three. I'm probably going to just stick with these three because I already have them. So I've used these three. So this is Kisses. This is Blossom. And this is Farm Girl. And then Lori's using different ones. But my goal on this is to try to use up what I have so that I can make a little bit of room in my cabinet so I can buy some more fabric. Farm Girl Vintage, yes, Farm Girl Vintage is correct. How is the dinosaur quilt coming along? I'm gonna work on it this weekend. I actually planned to work on it last week, but um, with all this stuff I'm showing you, I didn't have time. Because I want to be able to cut like the whole five blocks at one time. But yes, very soon. And it was so funny, my son was like, you said that was gonna be available for Christmas. And I was like, I didn't say what Christmas? It could be any Christmas, you could be 25 and getting it, like, yeah. That's what you get. You kind of get, you kind of get what I, when I can throw it in. I used the penmanship from B Backgrounds also. Yes, I did. So I used, oh, I used two more. I used this, which is the chicken wire. And that's in the bundle, I believe. The bundle I put together is the bundle. It's the six backgrounds that uh, Lori picked that were in stock. And this one too. So what I do is I try to follow in general what Lori's doing, but I make it work with what I have because I'm going to buy nothing. If I buy anything, it's going to be, well, I'm going to have to buy backing and borders, but um, I don't want to have to buy anything. Farm to Market is your favorite white that you've ordered Moda to make more. Okay, 20708-36 is from On the Farm. It will come in July, August. How is Harry Potter? Harry Potter, he, um, I think he fell off a cliff, but it, it will get done at some point. But my son also, they all have plenty of quilts. Like they have like 20 quilts. What fabrics are you using to make the dinosaur quilt? I'm using the quilt kit from Robert Kaufman and it's the fabric that Elizabeth Hartman picked. And my son likes it, so. Um, what is the number of white sewed with in the yellow? This is 20708-36, which is the white that just sold out on Friday. I had no idea it was gonna sell out. We had a ton of it. I thought that would last forever. Please make a white on white fat quarterly subscription. Oh my gosh. We can do white on white bundles, but I don't think we can do a subscription because there's not enough white on whites. But I think I could do a white on white bundle if um, we'll, I'll get on that. 
from what I have in stock. They won't, all the whites won't match though, but that's a good idea. I could do like a bundle of what we have in stock. Santa says, Kimberly, I started to get my layer cake from the club and I was wondering, can I get one for January? Email Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y at backquartershop.com and she'll let you know if um, we still have it. Thomas the Tank Fabric. We have it on order, I think, but I don't know the date. Just look on our coming soon page because I'm not sure the date on that. Do you have two machines? I have four. I have the white Juki and I have the silver Juki. And I have a baby lock and I have a Sashiko machine. Now here, we probably have like six machines, but at home I have four. I purchased my sew sampler, but I need to go somewhere to get the fabric requirements for my bright side quilt. The, they will be on the blog. So, um, they should have, it should be on the blog. When will strawberries and rhubarb ship as well as curiouser and curiouser? So I would just look at the date on our website and it will be either that month or the month after. This is my last live with you as I'm going back to work next week. Thank you for keeping me sane. Oh, thank you. I love the reds and those blocks from Lori. Are they from her collections? Yes, in that bundle, everything is from her. And she picked all those fabrics. What size shrinks when you starch? I don't know. I do know that on the jelly roll, if you starch it, it will starch the length. It will shrink the length. So let me think about this. Okay, so if, let me see. I got it. So here, if you're looking at your fabric, this is your salvage. It's gonna shrink this way. This side will stay intact. This will shrink. And this is your salvage. Ooh, I answered it. I'm so excited. Do you ever use the laser light on your baby lock? No. Um, I don't really use my baby lock. I only use it to serge the edges and if I want to do quilting, like um, top stitch. That was just a, I actually, um, my mom just gave it to me, but I'm not going to give it away because my mom bought it for me. Um, I just use my Juki more. And um, what months do the K Facet Club ship? Off the top of my head, I don't remember. If you click into the product online and then scroll down, it'll be at the bottom. Will the designer patterns be free or do you need to get the kit? So if you're in the designer mystery program, you will get with your blocks, the pattern will be included. We sell the patterns once the block of the month completely ends, they are not free. Do all of your kits allow for starching? Any of the block of the months that we cut in house, yes, and any cut, any kit we cut, yes, because we give five inches extra. If we buy the kit from, say, Robert Kaufman or Moda, they might or might not, but I've never had an issue. What is the yellow flower block you have on the table? I'm going to show you. And if you had a choice between buying a layer cake or a fat quarter bundle, what would I buy? I would buy two. I would buy two layer cakes as long as I didn't need any of my pieces to be bigger than 11 inches. So Virginia Bouvier, thank you for your super chat in Canadian dollars. Thank you, Janet Roberts, for your super chat. And thank you for the shout out to Connor, it made his day, from Shelly. Thank you for the super chats. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, okay, so when I showed you the red blocks, what I also worked on at the same exact time is all of this. So I was working on the red blocks and all of this at the same time. So this is a free sew along called Spring Brook Blossoms. It is on Cori Yoder's blog, Coriander Quilts, C-O-R-I-A-N-D-E-R, quilts.com. These fabrics right here will be used Okay, these are blocks one and two that I showed you last week. So I want to kind of show you some stuff to get you kind of ahead if you want to sew ahead. The column here 
These fabrics are used in the center block, which finishes six and a half inches. These fabrics right here are used here on the outside of the block. And this is the same pattern on all 12. This is also the same pattern on all 12. So what I did, this is what you can do if you wanna get ahead. So these are the first two blocks, the pattern is available. I made the rest of the 10 stems all the same, except I made this longer. So I made this white on white go about a quarter inch longer and you can see I didn't even start with straight. I just started with whatever strips and then I just trimmed at the top and this, when I add it, is bigger. So when I add this to my block, I'm gonna trim this and my block will be the exact size it needs to be this way. So I went ahead and made all 10 of these. I just made this longer by about a quarter inch. So you can get ahead on this by doing that. And I just pressed this center part open and I'll show you why I pressed that open and then these are just pressed to one side, but these are pressed open. And I'm gonna show you why. So here's your block. So I took all of the fabrics and this column and made all of this. Whew. So what you need is you need, from each of them you need two this way. And two this way. So I made all of the outside of my flowers already. I did it all Friday night. So on Friday night, I did all of this and three Lori Holt blocks. And it was about, let me see, four or five hours, and including eating. When you're working on this, it's very important to press open because these are gonna touch and these are gonna touch. And when you start adding your blocks, you're gonna have touching. So I found that it was best to press all of this open. So when I put it on my board, on my design board, I have them all lined up. So I've got each block lined up, all 10. So I'm gonna keep it neat. I did change this fabric to this because I just felt like this was just too medium for me. So this is 29115-28. I just use this. It's also used in the center of one of the blocks, but I just decided that once I cut this, that's just too light for me. And I'll just keep that. And now, these were cut, so I'm just gonna leave them there in case I need them. And then I'll keep that on one board. I'll keep these blocks on this board. And I'll put this here. And I have a note to remind me to cut this down. So let me know if there's any questions on the Springbrooks program. Is there a chance it may be reprinted by Moda? Um, I haven't heard that it is, but I would love it if it was because it's very popular. The red background is sold out. It will be available later today. What is the name of the white on white dot? 20708-36. It's called On the Farm. We will email Megan to make sure it pops up. We actually already made it pop up, so I'm, it probably just disappeared again. Sometimes our site does that when we sell out. When you press open, do you shorten your stitch length? Yes, I usually sew with a 1.5 stitch length at all times. The problem is, it's real hard to unpick your stitches. So when I finished all that I just showed you, I had some, I had four yellow prints left over, or three yellow prints. I had enough to make this. So I cut these. I found this fabric in my stash. I think it's an old, old fig tree. And I had enough of these. So I took this pattern. Now I didn't have enough left over to make all of it. So, but I had enough to make this. So I also sewed this because I thought, well, before I cut it up and to put it into scraps, I can use this. And this is my backing that I put together. And I had this fabric for some reason, for something else, so I'm gonna have to replace it. And I just took a Sweetwater label, 
sewed it in and added this. And the reason this is so big is this is exactly what I had in my stash. I didn't have enough to go skinnier. And I didn't have enough to go that way. So it was a way for me to use what I had. So that was fun, just picking up a second project. And I didn't panic when I didn't have enough yellow. I just found another one. And then this is gonna be my binding. So I'm gonna send this to Gina today. So I do shorten my stitch length. How do you prevent your bobbin case getting a needle puncher in it? I have no idea. I have never had that happen, so I don't know. Maybe someone in the chat can help you because I don't know. But everyone in the chat is super nice, so I'm sure they can help you. Would a jelly roll work for the coriander sew along? No. It would, let me see. It would work for the outside rings. So let me um, let me kind of look. So it would work for this because these are two and a half by four and a half. I'm not sure on this if it would work. It might. You'd have to make your half square triangle slightly different, but I'm not sure it would work for all the rest. But you could definitely use it for this. And then for this, this wouldn't work because these are pretty big. What weight thread? I use this thread right here and this thread right here. These are probably the only two threads I ever used. I use this Color 2000 Aurifil 50 weight for everything I just showed you, which is the Cory Yoder fabric, the Lori Holt fabric. I use color 2600. I'm gonna use that on American Gatherings, the flag sew along that she's going to have. And I also use it on the dinosaur quilt. And I think that's the only quilt that I use it on, but mostly I use 2000 and I, I buy the big cones. What is the name of the yellow fabric with bees? It is Springbrook Blossom, Springbrook. Isn't there a blue book stand from Lori? There was, and it's sold out. And now we have pink, and then we're gonna move to another color. So we do those one and done. So it's not coming back, but you might be able to find one on like eBay or something. The next thing I have done is the Jolly Bar. So along. So this is week four. These are the paradox blocks. You just need the book and then to follow our blog and you're gonna make four of these this week. So here are my four. And the Jolly Bar just came back in stock. I mean, just came in stock. So it just came in stock. This is the accent fabric. And this is the fabric I'm using Sunday Stroll. And the same thing, you can save your leftovers that you cut here to make half square triangles. So I'm gonna kind of lay out all the blocks I have so far so you can see how it's looking. And you can check out Gina Tell's Facebook because she showed a really cool way where she's changing hers up a little bit. And when we get to the end, I will show how I put it together. I'm not gonna put it together until we get done with the blog, but it's gonna be a table runner. And this is the Sunday Stroll background from the group, which is right here, which is the five yard piece I bought. So you can see the difference here. I can show you the difference in the two dots. The size of dots and the brightness of the fabric. And these are my leftovers, some of them from moving these. And with that Jolly Bar, this is gonna be a cute little table runner. 
with this Jolly Bar. Inside every Jolly Bar is a free pattern. So with that, I'm going to just show you all the pre-cuts. Bonnie and Camille fabric does tend to sell out pretty fast. So this is Sunday Stroll. This is the Jelly Roll, the Fat Eighth Bundle, the Honey Bun, which you guys are always asking for, Charm Pack, Mini Charm Pack, Fat Quarter Bundle. I am going to try to use some of these reds in the Lori Holt quilt. Um, I do have these left over from another quilt that I worked on and the layer cake and then I'm going to move these and show you the quilt you can make with the Jolly Bar so this is the Jolly Bar quilt I'm going to show you from the top camera and then I'll show you from the front so it's four blocks right here and this is what looks from the front let's see so this is designed by Angel. She also made it and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. So I'm gonna kind of lay it out and show you the block and the border and why she designed it that way. So right here, this is the block. There's four of these, but when she was designing this, she noticed there's some leftover fabric from making these half square triangles. So she decided to put those in the border so that there's not waste. And it comes out pretty big. So this kit is available and this is using our Jolly Bar. Pat Sloan also has a different layout for the Sew Along. Yes, great. So yes, I think it's great anytime you take something that we're doing and change it up so that you really like it. Are you making any more scrap bundles? Um, the red bundle, there should be plenty. If we sold out during live stream, I can make more. Um, but I'm not sure scrap bundle, ask me more, um, may, I'm not sure what that is. Does that need one Jolly Bar or two? We'll have to ask Nova, because I don't know the answer. What kind of starch do I use? This one, faultless, original hold. Now, Lisa Bonjean uses Crispy. It's, I think it's called Firm. So, and Nova uses Firm. I use the original hold. Do you supply the Jolly Bar books to suppliers in the UK? No, we keep that book. It is, um, that one we keep as just Fat Quarter Shop, and the reason why is it's $9.95, and if we sold it to distributors, we would have to increase the price. And we want that to just be a book that is just for us since the Jolly Bars are made just for us. But also if we sold to distributors, that book would have to be a much higher price because of the discount we have to give. Are you going to have the book Lisa Bonjean used this week on a trunk show? I can't recall the name. Sure, I will. we will email and look into what that is and get it. So the Jolly Bar on the quilt I just showed that's called Dove Springs, it only needs one Jolly Bar. What navy are you using for the background on Lisa Bonjean's flag quilt? So I actually bought 1040-43. I believe that's the number. It's the navy primitive muslin. But I have not cut that up, and I'm not final on that. We're sold out of it for a little bit. We might have, we're going to have more. I just don't know when. That fabric has actually been sold out since December. And um, I have not started putting it together, so I'm not sure, but I, that's what I think I'm going to go with. Is that the pattern that comes with the Sunday Stroll Jolly Bar? Yes, so that's the pattern that comes in. Leslie Bircher, thank you for your super chat. Kimberly, 
ever sew through your finger? Oh my gosh, I may have been distracted. Oh my gosh. Do you have to get a tetanus shot? No. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No, I've never sewn through my finger. Oh my gosh. That would be horrible. I'll probably sew through my finger now that we said it. I always jinx myself. Okay, so every year I come up with a scrap quilt to use or to make while I'm making blocks. So this year's is called Swirling Stars. Jocelyn designed it. It uses two of our triangle papers, H550 and H275. And what I do is when I finish a quilt, I make either the small or the large block and this quilt will end up being 66 by 88. So I now have two rows done. So I'm gonna show you and then I'll talk a little bit about. Okay, so I pressed everything open because in this quilt, there's a lot of touching pieces. So I just pressed everything open and I have half of it done. So we're in April, so that's good because that means I will be able to have enough fabric to finish it. So I decided this year, each fabric that's a print, I'm only using once. This was left over from the Best Friends Quilt Along, I believe this one was, and then I'm using one background in each block but I'm only using the print once. And then anything else I have left over is going in my scrap boxes. So this is B Basics. This is Christmas Morning by Layla Boutique. This is Lori Holt. This is Corey Yoder, Springbrook. This is Prim by Lori Holt. And this one you see, I just have a Bella Solid because, oh no, it's not a Bella Solid. This is the Blossom Fabric. Springbrook, American Gatherings by Lisa Bonjean. Sunday Stroll by, bon by Bonnie Camille. All Hallows Eve by Fig Tree. B Basics by Lori Holt. Figs and Shirtings by Fig Tree Quilts. More Sunday Stroll by Bonnie and Camille and Prim by Lori Holt. So I'll show you from the front camera. Let me hold it. So that's how it looks. So it's all scrappy. I think it looks good. The one thing I was concerned about, but I think it's gonna be okay is as I was doing this at home, I was a little bit concerned because like this one is, just has a little print, this has a little print, but then this one's busier. And then this one's, you know, busy. But then when you get over here, let's see. See, this is pretty busy. So I, what, what I decided is I was gonna use whatever I had on hand. So like this one, that's the only, this is only what I had that would work. This is all I had on hand that would work. So instead of buying one white on white to use with everything, I just decided to use what I have left over. And that's the only thing that I don't love about it is just how like this is cream and then this is plain. This has a print, this has a print, you know, it's got like, the backgrounds, I'm not like 100% sure that I did the right thing, but my goal is to not buy anything extra. So I think it'll look good when it's done and quilted, but that's my only thing that I don't like love, love. After you use the acorn starch, I'll be surprised if you go back to faultless. Do they have starch? I didn't know they had starch. We'll have to look after live stream. I thought they only had like Oh, okay, so maybe I'll use both. Maybe I'll use both. I sewed through my thumb and the needle broke off. You should probably go get a tetanus shot. Did it, oh no, oh no, sorry. 
how do I store my cross stitch thread to keep the numbers with the thread? Does that make sense? Go to Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, search on that channel, cross stitch storage and organization, and you will see exactly what to do. Scrap bundles I made before COVID, they look like they were out of something else. I don't, we still do the Moda Mix and the Riley Blake blends. That's what I thought. So I'm not sure, but I, the grab bags. Okay, so Moda does sell pre-made grab bags and they sell them in both Moda fabrics and Ruby Star fabrics. And I always have those on order and um, they sell out when they come in, but I always have a ton on order. Have you ever thought about offering digital copies of the Jolly Bar books for quilters from other countries? Um, I haven't on that one yet. I haven't thought about that one yet. I'll think about that. So now I'm gonna show you, we're adding a segment called um, previous finishes. So we're gonna pick something that I made or somebody else made that's in this building or it's at my house or wherever. Just old quilts. Now when we see these, I know none of the fabrics are gonna be available. The pattern may or may not be available. And um, it's just a fun way. But when we did this, I also realized I have another missing quilt. So it is on my to-do list that this year I somehow write down every quilt where it is because I keep losing them. So this is a book that we published with Aaliyah Lutz. She is a Riley Blake designer. We published it in 2016. So, oh my gosh, that's five years ago. And this quilt has this sampler quilt, which is lost. I looked all over my house and all over here. I can't find it, but I'm gonna show you some other quilts from it because this was, this is just a lovely, 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 cute quilt. So I'm gonna show you from the top. Now, I don't remember who made this one, but I know I did it because it's got applique eyes. So I paid someone to make it for me. And there's the back and I'll show the front mike from my long arm dot from my long arm dot com quilted it so that's one of the quilts in the book A s and then another quilt is this one and I love this one. I didn't make this one either. It's so cute. So it's, um, these are half rectangles. And the back. So this fabric is um, called Strawberry Biscuit. It was when um, Riley Blake had the division called Penny Rose. And the book includes six projects that includes a tooth fairy pillow and a sampler quilt. And we're gonna show you the sampler quilt in a second. So now we'll show you the sampler quilt that's on the cover that we're gonna find. Hopefully I'll find it. If I find it, I'll come show you. So this photo shoot we did in New Braunfels, Texas. Cause I remember doing it and the little ducks were so cute. And we also, this week, we came out with a brand new cross stitch, and I kind of thought it went with this. So, Peppermint Lane was a quilt we offered free years and years ago. And then we decided to turn it into a quilt book. And now we decided to turn it into a cross stitch. So Cheryl stitched this, and we're gonna have a sew along in Jolly July. If you wanna participate, join our Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube YouTube channel, and everything is there. And we got that framed at Hobby Lobby. And this is the quilt. And this was at my house. I'm gonna just show it in the front. This was quilted by Nubbin, I believe, years and years and years ago. So this actually my kids use, so it's probably dirty but um, I found this in my kid's room. So I kind of crack up when they say, when is my quilt gonna be ready? Cause I'm like, I don't know, like there's like a million in your room, just go get one. So it's really cute. I just thought that would be cool to show. And then 
I have one more quilt to show. I still have a lot more. I'm just showing you all the quilts at once. This is our video of the week. So we are taking older videos and showing them to you. This is called Layer Cake Custard. We published this video in November 2018 and we're throwing it back every week to some of our favorite quilts. So this is a video. And I don't know who this belongs to, but let's see. I'll find out. Let's see. This is Flower Garland Gathering Fabric. Terry made it, Jocelyn designed it, and Mike quilted it. So if you have some scraps, you have some layer cakes, you can um, sew it up this weekend. So I'm going to answer questions and I still have a little bit more. What is the name of this quilt? So the book is called Pretty Playtime. The last quilt I showed is Layer Cake Custard and the quilt before that was Peppermint Lane. How will you choose a binding for swirling stars? I probably do red. I probably do a red or navy. I love a red or navy binding. That really is like my favorite. So I'll probably do a red or navy and I might do a stripe. But I haven't even thought about that. Will there be a kit for Peppermint Lane? No, cause that's like, a, it's a couple years old. So we did have kits a couple years ago. Do you use the automatic needle threader from your Juki? Oh my gosh, okay. So recently on a Facebook group, a lady showed how to use the needle threader because it's very hard to use. And I watched it and it was a game changer and it worked. And I have since forgot how to do it. But there is a video, Just I would just get on, um, just Google how to thread it. But when I watched the video, it made sense. But usually I just thread it myself. I made three layer cake custard quilts, so fast and pretty. Yay, Peach! You have a cute little emoji. Hi, Kim, oh, that's already answered. Will there be a membership coupon soon? Yes, I'll get you one Monday. Do you always group your scrap quilts by collection or is this unique to this one? This year is the first one I'm doing. So I usually do each star or each block within it, within the collection. That way I can actually finish a block. If I have some left over, I'll just, I've saved, I have some extra half square triangles and I've saved them to use on the back. I like all of your shortcut quilts. It's what got me started and I adore the videos. It helps me make perfect blocks. Thank you. Do I ever use flannel as batting? I don't. How do you know what is the right way to press? I think that just all comes with experience. I do love when designers have patterns that show you pressing arrows. So I do love that. And thank you, Twyla Stone. Great job to everyone. You guys rocked it. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. So I want to show you something that's spe very special. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. We have raised $71,884 for Make-A-Wish. And on Tuesday, we got to grant a wish. Her name is Charlotte, and she is three. And here's a picture of her. Her wish was to go on a shopping spree. And she, uh, Make-A-Wish, does a lot of research on when they grant wishes. And she's about, she has been um, diagnosed for 13 months, but she's about to go into intense therapy starting Monday. So they granted this wish, and part of the wish comes Sunday also. So she arrived in a limo, and that's her mom. And then I'm just gonna show you some little pictures of her at the store. So this was after she made her bear. Her bear at the top is a bear, and the bottom is a mermaid, and she got mad because the shoes wouldn't fit the mermaid, which was funny, but so they let her take the shoes home. And then she got to dress the bear. And so everything she picked was princess. And then, oh, and then Jocelyn and, and we got her a Minnie Mouse doll and she loved it. She loved that little Minnie Mouse. And then you can see on the back, she's got her little um, bear in a backpack. And then that's her at the end. We were trying to get her to do a picture and um, she's so cute and that's her parents. And they're actually from Buda which is where we are. So that's Kevin on the left, Jocelyn on the left, me, mom and dad, and Charlotte. And we're gonna wish her the best. On Sunday, she is also going to get a iPad. 
and she's also going to be getting a little car to drive around and the iPad is for when she is in the hospital because she had asked that was the main thing she wanted I had asked in the live stream a few months ago if you would consider designing a honey bun shortcut pattern is it a possibility yes we will add it to the list it might already be in the list what current fabric do you recommend for peppermint lane I think it would be gorgeous in Christmas morning. Um, Christmas morning hasn't arrived yet, but I think it would be gorgeous in that. Will more large clappers be here soon? Mid-May. And I wanna thank all of our new YouTube members. We've got Leslie Donley, Eastern Sky, Mike Ostransky, I think he's in my Facebook group, Deb Mentor, Mary Thompson, Geneva, and Steve Alvarez, Kathy Longo, Kathy Longo, Denise Turk, and Pat Bremen. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching. Thank you all for your super chats. Thank you all for your support. And I will be back next week with more quilting stuff. So I'll see you then.